Hey there tech fans, Rick here again from the O-Ray team. Today I'd like to explain the IR Blaster technology that we build into a lot of our media extender products because it's a feature that will allow you to quickly and easily extend the reach of your remote control to a remote location in your home to be able to control the media device that you're watching in that remote location. It's a very powerful feature, extremely easy to use. We've had a few questions on it, so I thought I would start with an explanation of how infrared remotes work. Then I'll give you some understanding of what connections you need to make to the back of the products. And then finally, I'll do a demo here in the shop to show you exactly how easy it is to take advantage of this very powerful feature. So stay tuned and we'll talk a little bit about how remote controls work. All modern remote controllers rely on infrared technology for the communication link between the remote and the device you're controlling. When you push a button on your remote control, it generates a digital signal in the infrared band that tells the device what you want it to do could be turning up the volume, starting or stopping a DVD, or changing channels on your cable box. Inside your infrared remote is an LED on the front which generates that signal for you, much like a light bulb would in a flashlight. So when you push that button, you're broadcasting that signal out the front of the remote to some device that's across the room. But unlike a flashlight that casts a very wide beam of light, your remote controller has an infrared transmitter on the front that encodes a very narrow beam of information with ones and zeros to tell that remote device what you want it to do. Inside your remote device, you've got an infrared receiver that has to pick up those signals and then translate those into actions. So for example, if you're using your remote control with a DVD player, you'll point the remote in the general direction of the player. That way the infrared transmitter and receiver can see each other, and when you issue the commands by pushing buttons on the remote, the DVD player can respond. And that works fine if you're in a location that's close enough where the transmitter and receiver can see each other. Now let's assume you want to enjoy that media from the DVD player in an upstairs bedroom. You install one of our HDMI extender kits, you make the connection either wired or wireless, and you can enjoy that content in the upstairs bedroom. While you're enjoying that media in the upstairs bedroom, you may need to pause that DVD or rewind to a particular scene. The problem is you can't just point the remote at the media center downstairs because first off it's not powerful enough to reach that, and second, you've got obstructions in the way. There are walls and floors, all of which will block an infrared signal. So what we've done is actually included two little devices that allow you to extend that IR, that infrared signal, over the existing connection you've got between those extenders. We've got an IR receiver that you would plug in in that remote location. Then you could point your remote at that IR receiver. It would pick up those signals, send that signal over the same connection you've already established, and then transmit that to your DVD player so you can effectively control it from the upstairs bedroom remotely over that connection. Now we'll take a closer look at the IR Blaster's transmitter and receiver modules and I'll explain the difference between them and show you how they connect into the HDMI extender kit. At first glance, both modules look fairly similar and it's easy to get them confused. On the one end, you've got a 3.5 millimeter plug that's used to connect the module to the system through the ports on the back. But on the other end, you'll notice pretty quickly that one module is much larger than the other. This is the receiver module, and this is the transmitter module, and it's important to keep them straight. The receiver module goes with the receiver, and the transmitter module goes with the transmitter. We also include sticky tape, where you can adhere this to the monitor in the remote location, and you can adhere this to the front of whatever media device you're trying to control. The connections in the back are fairly simple, and I'll start with the transmitter, because that's located at your primary location. On the back, you have two choices, IR in or IR out you're going to connect the transmitter to IR out. So it gets connected right here. And this gets adhered to the front of the media source that you're controlling. With the receiver, it's the other way. You want to connect to the IR in. So the 3.5 millimeter plug gets plugged in here. And then this can get stuck to the front of the display that you're actually watching because you're going to have an infrared remote at that location, which this is going to pick up that IR signal. It's going to transmit it to the receiver all the way through the connection to the other end, and it's going to be broadcast back out here to the media device. That allows you to take that IR signal and extend it between those two locations to give you full control over whatever media you're watching. Now stay tuned, and we'll show you exactly how those connections work in a demo. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make when using the IR Blaster transmitter and receiver modules with one of the many HDMI extender kits we offer. And for today's demonstration, I'm using the O-Ray EX500IR HDMI extender. Now I've made the basic connections already to save us a little bit of time. And on this side of the desk, I'm simulating your primary location. Could be your den or your media room. It's where you watch your content most often. This would be your secondary location, let's just say an upstairs bedroom. 
At your primary location, the transmitter module is connected to power. I've got a media player over here. It's an Android media player. Simple HDMI connection to the HDMI in on the transmitter. The HDMI out on the transmitter goes to your local monitor, and you can watch your content here as you would normally. I then extended that media to the upstairs bedroom over a standard CAT6 LAN connection to the receiver that's up in the bedroom, and I've got a simple HDMI connection to the back of that monitor. There's no power required on the secondary side. Only one side has to be powered up. Now, if I'm down in the media room, I can easily control that media with a remote control, so I can start and stop it just like I would normally. The challenge is, if I'm in the upstairs bedroom, I'm watching that same media, but I have no control over it. So I can hit this remote all I want, and it's not affecting the media player downstairs because the infrared signal coming out the end of this couldn't possibly make it through the walls and the floor to hit the receiver inside that media center. So there has to be something you can do to extend that signal. And that's exactly what the IR blaster setup is designed to do. So there are two components that you need to be aware of, and they look pretty similar. They both have three and a half millimeter plugs on the end, but if you look at the top of them, one is really big and one is really small. The larger one is the IR receiver module, and it has to go at the remote location. The smaller one is the IR transmitter module, which goes at your main location. And essentially what's happening is you're gonna point this at that receiver. It's gonna take the infrared signals, transfer those to this module, broadcast it over the same cable you're connected for your media, your audio and your video going up to the bedroom, sends it down to this guy, connects to this, and then broadcasts it to your media player downstairs. So the connection to this one, it's a little confusing because this is the receiver, but you've got to think of this as sort of plumbing where the signal's got to go in this end, travel downstairs and come out that end. So on this particular connection, you're going to connect this to the IR in. In this case, it's the left connection. And then this is typically glued with a small piece of 3M tape to the front of the monitor that you're watching. And that makes it easy for you to point it at the monitor and control it. On this end, you want to make a connection to IR out, which is the right connection. And you want to put this in front of whatever media source you're using because this is going to broadcast that IR signal at the front of it and it has to be picked up by that media source. So there's another piece of small sticky tape that you can stick it to the front of the player, but I'll just simulate it by putting it out in front now and hopefully it's pointing, it's pointing back far enough where you can see it. All right, so let's give it a try. So if I'm in the upstairs bedroom, I'm going to point the remote now at this receiver and there you go. So you can control it from upstairs, and again, what's happening is the infrared signal that's controlling that media player is being picked up by this receiver. It's going to this receiver over here, it's being sent down the wire, out this end, and then rebroadcast into your media player down that end. And it doesn't impact your ability at that primary location from controlling it as well. It just gives you the ability at that secondary location to fast forward, rewind, or pause, or whatever you have to do with that media source when you're upstairs. This is a very unique feature that we build into a lot of our HDMI extension kits, and customers love it. So it's very simple to use. You just have to be careful when you're connecting the modules up that you get the transmitter module on the right side and the receiver module on the right side. So stay tuned and we'll have some final thoughts. We hope this overview has been helpful in showing you just how easy it is to implement the IR blaster function on one of our HDMI extension kits. By making a few simple connections, you can greatly increase the control you have over the media you're watching at a remote location. If we've missed anything or you have further questions, please check the FAQ on our website or use the Contact Us link to drop us a note and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks again for watching.